Few people know that on October 6, 2022, Instagram celebrated its 12th birthday, as well as the fact that this social network made us discover selfies and photo filters. We can have different opinions about it, but it also sparked the modern obsession with likes. It is hard to meet a person who has no Instagram account or at least has never heard about the existence of this social network. Every day, millions of people post their photos, communicate with each other, or promote their businesses through this social network. So how often do you check out Instagram? Write down in the comments. But before we begin, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with future content. The word Insta has become so familiar and well-known that many people don't even question how this global brainchild actually came to be and who was the originator of the number one network. Anyway, I won't bore you with long introductions, but tell you how a few Stanford University graduates managed to get billions of people hooked on their service and make a fortune on it. So imagine this scene. In spring 2006, an average Stanford University student, Kevin Seistrom, stands at the coffee machine at Cafe Del Doge in Palo Alto and doesn't even notice a man approaching the counter. Kevin has had a very difficult day, and he's nervously tapping his foot against the floor while waiting for coffee, not even realizing that in just a moment, his life will change dramatically. When Kevin looked up, he was surprised to see Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, standing in front of him again. A year earlier, Zuckerberg had already had dinner with Seistrom. That night, a year ago, he offered him the chance to leave his final year at Stanford so he could develop a unique photo service for Facebook. As you've already guessed, Seistrom said no at the time, though. The truth was simpler. The guy just wanted to finish his studies, after which he intended to enter the startup world. Now I know that it was a mega success, but I wondered what I could do on my own. Kevin once told reporters. Many people would probably say, how did he even know Mark Zuckerberg? And what happened before Stanford? Kevin Seistrom, the future billionaire and Instagram founder, was born on October 30th, 1983 in Holliston, Massachusetts in a wealthy family. His mother was a sought-after marketing specialist, while his father was president of human resources for the American retail chain TGX. At school, he often pranked his classmates, such as using some software to control the mouse cursor on another computer from a distance, thereby breaking the connection to the network. In his free time, the boy worked on creating his own level in the game Doom 2. While in high school, he worked part-time at the Boston Bit Store in Boston. He was very good at programming since he went to private school, where this subject was studied more deeply than any other. So it was no surprise that after high school in 2002, he easily enrolled in Stanford University, where he continued to study computer science intensively. As it seemed, the university was supposed to give the guy new knowledge. As it turned out later, our hero quickly got disappointed. The whole point was that the institution offered too much theory rather than practice, and the result was that by the end of the first semester, they were learning all the things that the boy had already learned in school. He spent a lot of time reading programming books, thus getting ahead of his course. Anyway, things got boring for him, so he soon switched to studying management, where the idea of setting up a business came to him. Moreover, during his student years, Seistrom first became seriously interested in photography and even went to short-term courses in Italy, where he discovered the Holga camera. It was a low-cost camera made in Hong Kong since the 1980s. This technological marvel created small square images. The quality was poor, but the plethora of effects was mesmerizing. As you've probably realized, this aesthetic, Lomography, was the inspiration behind Instagram. In fact, the first icon, which was drawn in just 45 minutes in a student dormitory and remained in place for almost six years, had a Polaroid on it. All in all, the guy was improving his skills every day. And as a third year student, he dared to apply for the Mayfield Fellows Program. A few weeks later, he received an enticing offer to join the project. And that's where he met Mark Zuckerberg. Mayfield Fellows selected Kevin to create a podcast called Odeo during a four-month internship. The internship was a serious motivation for Seistrom, and thanks to Odeo, he made his first serious contacts in the high-tech world. By the way, two years later, Odeo became the basis for the well-known Twitter. After graduating in 2006, Kevin already boasted quite a bit of experience and expertise. He even received several job offers from Google and Microsoft, and after some reflection, he opted for Google. 
It was one of the most successful startups in Silicon Valley at the time, where Kevin worked for almost three years until he realized that the company's corporate ethos was only stifling the ambitious guy's desire to create his own brainchild. Of course, his salary was quite high, and he could probably have kept working, but it wasn't the money that attracted him. It was the desire to create something of his own. After leaving Google, he was actually out of the workforce, followed by several months at home working on an app for Next Stop. At that time, gaming services that combined posting geolocations with the option of posting check-in and earning points started to gain huge popularity. That's how Foursquare was launched, and in 2009, Systrom created its prototype called Bourbon. Systrom believed that he combined all of Foursquare's functionality with the ability to share photos from events and earn points for doing so. In December 2010, Kevin showed his prototype to Baseline Ventures venture capitalist Steve Anderson, who agreed to invest $250,000 in the project. After a while, Anderson, as an investor, insisted that he find another business partner who would help Bourbon avoid a quick loss of interest and stay financially viable as long as possible. Systrom had no choice but to accept the offer. A few weeks later, he quit Next Stop. Anyway, the idea of starting his own business never left Kevin's mind. Yet it was impossible to implement it alone. He definitely needed a partner. Another Stanford University graduate, Mike Krieger, who was well-versed in psychology, linguistics, philosophy, and coding, became such a partner. Those lucky skills and knowledge proved to be a good deal for the guy. Kevin's failed experience with the Bourbon app stuck in his memory forever. Now he knew that there was no point in rework and redesigning something if the user didn't like it. You had to get rid of it once and for all by replacing it with something else. Since then, two programmers obsessed with the same idea have holed up in the Dog Patch Labs co-working room in San Francisco, working on a new version of the Bourbon app. That's how Systrom and Krieger created their second pilot project a couple of months later. The new version differed from the previous one with simplified functions, and the centerpiece were photos, comments, and likes. In fact, the app's concept was simple, to create the most convenient service where you could share spectacular photos with your friends in a few seconds. And naturally, they didn't spend much time on naming. The app got a new name, Instagram, from the words Instant Telegram, allowing you to post a processed photo in just three clicks. On the night of October 6, 2010, Instagram was released on the App Store. Kevin shared the news on Twitter, and it was immediately spread by his friends and former Bourbon users who eagerly awaited its rebirth. I guess it's also worth noting that the guys were very lucky in some ways since the release of the application coincided with the release of the iPhone 4 on June 7, 2010, which was equipped with a high-performance camera and a high-resolution screen. The Apple phone owners now knew how to use their cameras and photos, and a few hours later, the modest Instagram server collapsed under the traffic pressure. October 7th lasted an eternity for Systrom and Krieger. During the first 24 hours, the application was downloaded by 25,000 users. The server kept crashing, had to be restarted over and over again. Kevin and I were panicked. Our little server collapsed under the pressure of traffic on the first day. We were freaking out and breaking our fingers. It was all a blur. However, the smell of success and the idea that we hit the jackpot made us keep going. Just imagine, in one day, the app topped the list of the most popular free apps for the iPhone. A day later, the New York Times, Bits Blog, and TechCrunch broke the news and Instagram was downloaded more than 100,000 times in just one week. A week later, the number of downloads reached the 1 million mark. While the promotion succeeded, the programmers kept facing the main challenge, the servers. Day after day, the partners struggled against a problem with their own resources. They managed to live like that for almost a year, during which the number of downloads exceeded several million, and the servers crashed almost every day. Something had to be done urgently, and the guys were forced to negotiate with those who had a resource. So they ended up at Amazon's office, and they managed to fix the problem by moving small Instagram to the giant's powerful servers. Besides working with the servers, the programmers spent days and nights working on improving the app. A system of hashtags was developed, making it much easier to find photos. The cool feature that Instagram is loved for, the retro filters that can turn any amateur photo into an eye-catching picture, were part of the app's concept from the very beginning. There were 11 of them at the time of launch, and still today, 
Fans around the world can edit photos with historical effects such as Hefe, X-Pro2, and Toaster. The success was so overwhelming that in July 2011, the app had already more than 100 million photos uploaded. In 2012, Instagram reached 30 million users, and on April 3rd of the same year, the app made its first appearance in the Android App Store. A week later, on April 9th, 2012, Mark Zuckerberg announced the purchase of Instagram for $1 billion, 700 million of which were given in Facebook shares. The number of shares received by Systrom, Krieger, and the rest of the Instagram team has not yet been disclosed. It is thought that Zuckerberg's purchase of the Instagram app was not accidental. The man strongly feared that Instagram would upstage Facebook. Moreover, for several years, Zuckerberg's programmers have been working on a similar app, which was supposed to be a plug-in for Facebook. Another striking thing was that the app had absolutely no revenue at the time of the Instagram purchase, i.e., it was not monetized. Despite the app's sale, Kevin Seinstrom and Mark Krieger kept their positions and continued to work at Instagram. Meanwhile, the entire team of 12 people moved to the Facebook office as part of the agreement. Under their reverent guidance, the app continued to develop and expand its range of photo filters. Boomerang, Stories, and Direct Chats were launched. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg made serious efforts to recoup his new brainchild. Instagram had to start earning money. It took at least three years. In 2015, the app added advertising inserts with videos and photos as well as hyperlinks to the advertisers' websites. Instagram already had advertising revenue of $573 million in the first quarter of 2016, equal to 10% of Facebook's total revenue. On June 26, 2018, Bloomberg published data from its own analytics, revealing that if Instagram had remained an autonomous company, its capitalization by now could have exceeded $100 billion, 100 times the amount paid by Zuckerberg six years earlier. On September 25, 2018, exactly three months after the Bloomberg report, Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger announced they were leaving the Instagram team at Facebook. The same Bloomberg agency later said that this decision was due to growing tensions with Zuckerberg in their business relationship. In November of that year, when trapped by reporters in San Francisco, Seistrom explained that he and Krieger had their reasons for leaving, but refused to divulge any details. As Instagram appeared, all of our lives became public. Even the most mundane things like going to a restaurant or a trip out of town, which we didn't notice before, turned into infotainment. Each of us is a self-produced TV series now. The social network conceived as an app for loved ones has become a window into the lives of celebrities. The first celebrity to register on Instagram was the rapper Snoop Dogg. When Justin Bieber opened up an account, the activity of the singer's fans almost caused the servers to crash again. In 2016, Seistrom traveled to the Vatican to help set up an account for the Pope. Today, three top celebrities have three times as many followers on Instagram as the U.S. population. Soccer player Cristiano Ronaldo has 495 million. Celebrity and businesswoman Kylie Jenner has 372 million. And soccer player Lionel Messi has 371 million followers. There's also Selena Gomez with 355 million followers and many other brilliant and famous people who are actively managing their Instagram pages and pleasing their fans with new photos every day. In 2011, the very first selfies with the phone were posted by Jennifer Lee from San Francisco, triggering a flood of photos in this format. A couple of years later, the Oxford Dictionary declares selfies the word of the year. Many people post themselves several times a day and closely monitor the reactions of their followers. It's no exaggeration to say that Instagram has turned our lives upside down. How we communicate with each other, how we see the world, how we consume goods and information, and how we behave in our daily lives has changed dramatically since Instagram hit the scene. Now, this powerful social network determines where we travel, how we develop a marketing strategy, and even how well we sleep. That's how an app for editing low-quality photos called Instagram has become the largest mobile social network, a place for people worldwide to communicate, and a convenient platform for doing business. Kevin Seistrom turned 39 in 2022 as a billionaire. We can also confidently assume that leaving Instagram for Facebook is not an early retirement because 39 years old is the golden age for a billionaire in the tech industry. Moreover, maybe very soon, 
he will surprise us again with something new and unusual. Anyway, that's probably all I wanted to tell you. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining and informative. If so, give it a thumbs up and be sure to comment on how often you use Instagram.